Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahabashai, Bahasham, Waha Raka Kwadash, and double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teach his truth well and that continue to teach his truth well, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe. This lesson is going to be based on just doing this work. You're going to have those that came in the last hour, but they were going to be saved. Why? Because they were predestined to be, to be saved. Okay. But the men that know about this truth, that have been awoken to this truth, and that are in camps, even out of camps, if you know it's in your ability, and you know... Yahweh has given you signs where you should be teaching, whether it's your outside on the highways and byways, whether you're doing videos, whether you're helping out the brothers. Do that, because it's all going to pay off. So I want to start off on Matthew 20, and it says, this is a parable of the vineyard. Okay, bear me just a minute. Let's get this set up quickly. Okay. Because you may be thinking... Hold on a minute. You may be looking at a brother and saying, hold on a minute. How this brother just came into the faith? But well, how comes he's getting the reward of salvation? Why? Because he's of the elect. And why wouldn't you want that for your brother anyway? Unless you're jealous. Bear me just a minute. Okay. This ain't the time to be envying. Bear me just a minute. Okay. Okay, we got that on deck. We're going to get straight to this. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay, okay so we're going to start from Matthew 20. For the kingdom of heaven, okay, is likened unto a man that is in the householder which went out early in the morning to, to his hire his labours into his vineyards. Okay. And who were the labours? We are the labours. Remember what the scripture says. The harvest is plenty, but the labours are few. So there's loads of gathering to do, but the labours are very few. Really, there should be more brothers out there teaching this word. There's only a very, very few. Okay. And that's why I'm saying, if it's in your ability to get out... Get out and do this if it's in your ability. If you're a teacher, you have this faith, you know the scriptures. Get out and teach this word. What's stopping you? What well, you can't spare one hour. You can't spare an hour, 40 minutes out of your day to get out there. Okay? Because a lot of you are playing about. Okay? You're, you're just watching these videos for entertainment. Eating popcorn. No. Get out there. That went out early in the morning to hire labourers into his vineyards. So you notice it was morning, and he's what hiring what labourers, the workers into his vineyard. And what's a vineyard? Brother should know what that is. What that is. Vineyard. Which comes from vintage yield, where you, where you harvest grapes and you tread them grapes down, and that's how you get wine, fermented wine. Vintage vine harvest yield from vineyard combining form of vineyard stem the man to take off to distribute so that's a vine okay plant which bears grapes which wine is made okay and when he had agreed with the labors for a penny a day so bear me just a minute they agreed for a penny what's a penny Another word for penny, I believe, is denarius in the in the Rome. It's likened unto what denarius? Bear me just a minute. Yes, it is. Penny. Let's type in that word for penny. Strong's G twelve twenty. Denaria. 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 Denarius. Denarius. 
equals containing 10. A Roman silver coin in New Testament and took its name from it being equal to 10 asses, which is donkeys. Okay. A number of 217 BC increased 16. Yes, that's it. It was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. It would seem that the Denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. And it references the Matthews 20. You see? So they were what? Agreed to a penny a day, a denarius. Okay. And when he had agreed with the labors for a penny a day, he sent them he sent them into his vineyard to what? To labor. We've been sent out. Yahweh has sent us out. This is a parable. But to labor. Okay. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So when it says standing idle, what were they doing? Nothing. And bear me just a minute, because this reminds me of something. Idleness. Teach you. So you got, you're also going to have brothers that were in the world, they were really not about anything. And the Lord will, will, can, can pick a man that was a nobody, was not about anything, can bring him into the truth. The Lord's arms are not short that he cannot save. Bear me just a minute. This is a blessing what we've got. Can't take, can't take this truth for granted. Let's quickly go to Ecclesiastes 33 and 27. And it says, send him to labor that he be not idle. So this is this is what this um the householder of this vineyard done. He sent him to labor that he be not idle, because he was sitting idle in the marketplace, the Agora, and Agora is a place for trading. Okay. Just like when you see these Jakes and you go into the to the ghettos, where are they? They're outside of the Bettys. Okay. Talking rubbish. Or outside of the barber shop. Or inside the barber shop. For idleness teacheth much evil. Okay, so idleness, what does it teach? Much evil, because when you're idle, that's when Satan has a stronghold on your mind, because you're not occupied in the scriptures. So men that become evil, have an evil eye, evil mind, is because they're not occupied in the scriptures. So even idleness can teach much, much wickedness. Okay, and he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, okay, I will give you. And they went their way. So he said, whatever is right, I will give you, which is what your pay, according to your pay. And again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out. The eleventh hour was that, that, that last hour, okay, and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? He was asking, why, why are you just doss, dossing about, doing nothing? They say unto him, because no man have hired us. In other words, because they, they, they don't have any work. He saith unto him, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that ye shall receive. So who was actually doing that? He was actually doing them the favour. He was employing them, just like we've been employed to do this work. But men, they're still not going to take heed. But they're going to come to camp, act like they're about the truth, but they're not going to take heed. And individuals like this, Yahweh is just gonna get rid of eventually. Because you, you just you're just talking. If you've been watching this truth long enough and you know the basic scriptures, that's enough for you to teach. Okay. So so when even was come, the Lord of the servant. So evening, what was evening? The end of the day. Okay. The Lord of that servant, the Lord of the vineyard, saith unto his steward, call the laborers. And what's the steward? The steward is another servant, but more appointed over you to watch over those that are doing that labor. And give them their hire, their wages, beginning from the first, from the last, unto the first. So it said the last, it didn't say the first. So those that came in, in the eleventh hour, they were given what? Their wages. And remember, this is parabolic so those that you may have a man that comes in a year before the before this place is destroyed two years that individual if he's of the elect he's still going to be saved okay whether he came in after you or not this is not so people get caught up on age oh i've been in the truth this long that long well certain men guess what you don't know you don't know their spirits you don't know who they are 
You don't know who these men are. You're looking at a younger man, looking down upon him. Who is he to tell me what to do? No. And give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, they were hired about the eleventh hour. They received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. So, the first individuals, they had that, what's that, what's that mentality? Like a sport rep mentality. Like that self, it's, it's like a selfish mentality. They supposed that they had received more. That means they, they were thinking more highly of themselves. Why? Because they were in this longer. So this goes for individuals that were in this truth longer. And you're looking down upon other men because they just came in. Why aren't you happy for that man? And this is this is like this is jealousy. And they likewise receive every man a penny. Okay. And when they had received it, they murmured. Can you imagine that? You've done your job, you agreed to a wage, and you're murmuring against the guy that hired you. You know what that's called? Not showing gratitude. And they murmured against the good man of the house. Okay. And you don't want to be murmuring against your Havashai. Because he's thought this, this is parabolic. He has given us these talents to use. Saying these have wrought one but one hour. And it has made them equal unto us. So these were proud individuals. Oh, they just came in. They just came in but yesterday. But they're getting the same amount. Yeah, they're getting the same amount as you because you agreed to that pay. Which have borne the burden of the heat and the day. So their excuse is well. We were doing this during the heat and day. We were working hard. We were plucking out them grapes, plucking out them roots. At the heat of the day. But that didn't make no difference. You agreed to that pay. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I did you no wrong. Did this not though agree with me for a penny? That's what the master, that's what the master of this household said. Okay, that's what the manager of the household said. You agreed to me for that one penny. Okay, I ain't doing you no wrong. Take that is dying and go thy way. And I will take your money and go about your business. So obviously, he wasn't pleased. I will give unto the last, even as unto thee. So the individual that came in a little bit later, he's going to receive the same. As those that came in first. Is not it lawful for me to do what I will with my own? And it is. Yahushua can do what he wants with his own because the elect belong to him. They don't belong to you. They belong to Yahushua. Is that I evil? Bear me just a minute. A wicked... I... Mm-mm-mm. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 40 and 10. Bear me just a minute. We're going to hold there. So a lot of the scriptures, when you really go in depth, it deals with personalities, different characteristics as well. And what we're reading now, the individuals that laboured first, they were envious at those and jealous at those that had that came in the 11th hour. Well, why would you, why would you have that mentality? You should be happy. Because you want, don't you want your brothers to be saved? See, that's the mentality you're supposed to have. You want your brothers to make it. Okay. Those that are sincere. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 14 and 10. The envious man have a wicked eye. So these individuals, they had a wicked eye. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. Okay. And you notice how he says turn away your face because he doesn't want people to notice. And despiseth men. A covetous man's eye is not sat And these are horrible, horrible traits. An envious man, a covetous man, because he wants what you want. He's jealous. Okay? You have something that he doesn't possess. But instead of building up yourself, instead of individuals building up themselves, what do they do? They covet what you want. And that's really a Jezebel spirit. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion so you've got to work on your portion what you've been given and the iniquity of the wicked dryeth up his soul so that's not the way to be let's go back to where we were and lord willing i won't make this lesson too long matthew so we're back on matthew's 20 okay about the laborers let's go back to 20 and 15 is it not lawful for me to do what i will with my own because the elect belong to you how is that i evil 
So this is what the master of this servant, this worker was saying. Is your eye evil? Wicked? you got a wicked eye. An eye is physical eye and your mind. Okay? Because I am good. So the last shall be first. Okay? And the first last. And that's so spiritual. Because those that are first in this kingdom... Those that got all the, the riches and everything of this kingdom, they're going to be last in the kingdom. That's why it's better to suffer now. Better to have less. Less is more. That's what I'm learning as well. Okay? For many be called, but few chosen. So many are called into this truth, but only a few chosen. Okay? So that was that, was that on that parable. So everybody's going to have their higher, and that higher is the same reward. Okay. Everybody's going to get that reward. Okay. According to the labor they've put in. Okay. And that main reward is what? Salvation. That's that's what we're striving for. Anything outside of that is nonsense. Bear me just a minute. That's, you know what that is? That's that spirit of um comparison. I mean, you're supposed to be comparing yourselves with another man. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. Quickly go to that. Just do the work. Work on your... I've, all, I've always pushed that. Work on yourself. Okay? And as soon as you start doing that, you have a different... You know, just a different aura about you. Okay? You're not, you're not coveting what another man has. Because that's just an ugly trait. You're trying to dress like him, you're trying to talk like him. It's like, what, what are you doing? Okay. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. There's a lot of envy. Okay, bear me just a minute. 10 and 12. One of my favourite scriptures. For we dare not to make ourselves of that number. What, the 144, the, the elect. But we have hope. And we, we, that's why we say hope for elect. Or compare ourselves. Bear me just a minute, Baba Kasha. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. So you don't want to be comparing yourself to another man in this truth because what Yahweh has given him is for him. It's not for you. Well, it could be to edify you, but it's not for you as in terms of you taking it because that was given to that man. Okay, it's his talent. That's why you need to know your talent. If you don't know your talent, pray to your Shai. If you don't know your purpose, pray to your Shai for your purpose. Ah, bear me just a minute. Here we go, here we go. Dama. Strong's H1819. Dama. 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 And it says to be like. So when you're comparing yourself with someone, you're trying to be like them. You're trying to act like them. That's not that's not cool because other people can see that as well. Hold on a minute, but the other individual that's the un, the other individual does that. Why are you doing that? That's 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 not you. To be like to resemble. And really, if you if you seek to resemble anything, the scripture says, "Mark the perfect man." You want to be in the resemblance of Yahweh Shai, if anybody. Okay. Because if man's wicked and he falls out of the truth, you're going to follow him. You're going to resemble that. To be like, to resemble, to like and to compare. To imagine, to think, to make oneself like. Similar truths. And that's not a good thing. Then guess guess what you start end up doing? You start looking at a camp and saying, well, he can do that, but he can't do this. Well, he can do that, but he... Bro, that's why it's a body. The body, so you different members. The different members do different things. Not everybody's going to do the same thing. There's 12 tribes. The 12 tribes have different spirits. This, they have different spirits as in terms of the tribes. But it's the same spirit. Work into that same what? Gift. Work into that same goal. One body, one faith, one baptism. Under your Habashai. But where do you, where's, where's your role in that? Okay, because if you're always comparing yourselves... That's going to wear you out. And eventually you're going to fall out. Oh, let me see if I could do it better than him. And No. Work on the measure you've been given. And the more you start doing that, the more Yahweh will give you more. And you start realizing, hold on a minute. This is what Yahweh has given me. 
he's giving me this talent. And that's when you start realising. Because if, if you're watching what another man's doing too much, then how are you able to work on yourself? You see what I mean? Ah, oh, I can do this, but he can't do that. Okay, you might be good at throwing a left jab. I might not be good at throwing a left jab. But I could watch you and work on that. But I'm not trying to compare myself. So it's all about knowing your own measure. Okay? Or commend with some. We don't commend, com compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. And what does commend mean? That's a bad thing as well. Commending yourself. Commend means praise. And you're supposed to be praising yourself. Because I've heard... Excuse me. I've heard an individual say that I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. I've just done a video. Bro, wrong mindset. Proud. Celebrate for what? You ain't, you ain't made it yet. You don't even know if you're... What are you celebrating for? I've heard an individual say, I've, 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 done, I've done my job now. No, you haven't. The scriptures say, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Men don't really understand what this is about. Okay. Commend. Approve. Let me just a minute. Commend, praise, Lord, commend, boast, foolish fools, commend, celebrate. What are you celebrating of? What's that? You don't celebrate yet. You celebrate when you've achieved something. What have we achieved yet? We ain't achieved nothing yet. We're, we're coming into that point where you're shy. It's what's going to lift up that standard. We still have work to do. But by measuring themselves by themselves, spare me just a minute. So you have individuals that measure, measure themselves up to others. Or, you know, I could do that a bit more better. Or he, sp he speaks better than this brother, yeah. Not every brother's going to be eloquent. You've got some brothers that are more eloquent than others. And you've got some brothers that are more rough around the edges. Because that's how Yahabashai has designed it. Bear me just a minute. You expecting everybody to be the same. Measurement, stature, size, size, portion. So everybody's been given a different portion. Okay. And again, with that portion, you're supposed to use that portion for yourself and for the ministry. More so for your shy. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So if you're doing that, you're obviously not wise. Because you're just going to tie yourself out. You're always going to be watching, well, I could do it better. When that man you're watching, he's focusing on himself. So you're just you're just tying tiring yourself out. Okay. Verse 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which the most high have distributed, given to us a measure to reach even unto. So Yahushua has given you your measure. Not another man's measure, your measure. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, stretching ourselves. You see? What does it mean to see if you're stretching yourself beyond your measure? That means you're going above the bounds that your house has given you. Okay? Spreading out, spreading, spreading out. You're trying to extension, expansion, turning the sides. And it also goes into wrestling judgment. Okay? So when you're stretching out, you're trying to go above what your house has given you. And he, if he's not giving you that, guess what? It's going to be made known. No, nope, that's not you. Okay? When you work on yourself, Yahweh will give you your measure for you to use. Okay? And it's going to be according to your ability. As a measure reach even unto you, for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reach not unto you. Because Paul was on his travels when he was doing this. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Mashiach, not boasting of things without our measure. That is of other men's labours. And you can't boast of another man's labour. Another, You can't piggyback off another man what another man's doing. I've seen this before. I've experienced this before. An individual tried to piggyback off my works. You can't do that. It's about your faith. Scripture tell you that in Apocrypha. He that shall be able to be saved by what? His, his faith or his works in the Apocrypha. Not boasting of things without our measure. That is of other men's labours. Okay. And it says, bear me just a minute. But having hope when your faith is increased. Because our faith is increased after these trials that we shall be enlarged by you according to the rule abundantly. 
preach the gospel in regions beyond you. Because Paul was travelling and not to boast in other men's line of things. Made ready to our hands. So you can't boast in what another man's doing. You could be happy for him. Because obviously you show your brother's um When your brother's growing. You, you're, sh you're sharing that same success for him. You're happy for him. But you can't boast in another man's li li uh, line of things. Yeah he done that. So yeah he's going to get me through. No it's, it's on you. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord Jehovah Shai. For not, for not he that commendeth himself. Men want to commend themselves. And the scriptures tell you that in Luke, he, um, those that justify themselves before men. For not he that commendeth himself, praise of himself, is approved. So you can be praising yourself all you want. But that's not approved. Okay, that's not acceptable. But whom the Lord commendeth. So it's about how who Yahweh Shai commendeth. Because men, men can like you, a thousand men can like you, but Yahweh Shai could hate you. That's why you want what? Favour with Yahweh Shai. Okay. Bear me just a minute. Ain't no room for boasting. Of thyself. Proverbs 27, Baba Kasha. We're just doing what we're supposed to be doing. After you've done all this, still say I'm an unprofitable servant. Yesterday, it was a very, very busy day. So I couldn't do as much videos as I wanted to. You know? Because I wanted to do more. But that's, that's me again, always striving. Proverbs 27. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. So also, we're not supposed to boast ourselves of the next day. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, you don't know. Don't even know if you're going to get through today, but through hope, yes, we will. For thou know it's not what a day may bring forth. You don't know what a day is going to bring. You never know. That's what it tells you in Matthew 6. The evil is sufficient for today. You've got to deal with dealing with enough evil. Let another man praise thee. In other words, you let another man do that. Okay? Because when they, that's Yahweh Shai. You letting another man do that. That's Yahweh Shai. You praising yourself. You may not have done a good job. Oh, why ain't anybody praising me? Let me praise myself. That's not good. And not that own mouth. A stranger and not that own lips. Because if you're doing it with your own lips, what's that? You're commending yourself. You're Really, you're deceiving yourself. Yeah, I've done a good job. I'm brilliant. No, no, you're not. Because if, you, if we really examine things, we're still wretched. Okay, we still need a saviour. We still need your house shy. Okay. Just be honoured, even if you have one talent. Just be honoured that you're in this faith, you know the truth, and your house has given you the spirit to endure. That's the main thing. Everything else, it doesn't matter. Okay? So with this, I'm going to shut off here, because I don't want to make my lessons too long, because I know certain brothers and sisters may have a short attention span, but until the next time, shout out to the hopeful elect, and remember, we are all what them workers in the vineyard. Whether you came in, whether you've been in this room for a long time or you've just came in, that individual that's predestined to be saved, he's going to be saved. Okay? And that's what you should want for your brother. So until the next time, shout out to the hopeful elect across the globe. Shout out.